Hi there. Today I'm going to tie a small, uh, a small, very nice uh, salmon fly. This is uh, this is a, a small pattern that I have uh, created. Um, it's it's a grey and uh, grey and and fluoro chartreuse, fluoro uh, fluoro yellow pattern. Um, a very very nice pattern, I think. I must say I have not caught a salmon on this yet, but uh, it's it's one of my my base my my principal patterns for for this summer is. Uh, a uh, trip I'm going to co to the Kola Peninsula, so I plan to catch a lot of salmon on this. But I have to agree. I have to have to confess it has not yet uh, caught any any salmon. But well, still it's it's a nice nice looking fly. Um, it's it's fairly simple. I take some uh, some uh, some uh, senyo laser dubbing. Uh, that's this senyo laser dubbing is nice because uh, um, because of. Uh, it's it's easy to to work with. It's it's easy to make some uh, some good tags and butts and and uh, and uh, wings. Uh, besides, it's it's great properties as as a dubbing. So I'm just gonna start by adding a small tail made of uh, fluorocytrus um, sinew, like this. Cutting all the leftovers, and then using a very small amount to to uh, to uh, to hide my tying thread and to create the butt like that. This is uh, the tying thread here is actually a new tying thread. It's uh, it's the Future Fly uh, uh, eighteen uh, O. So it's very thin, but it's very very strong because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, GPS thread. So then I'm taking a Future Fly US tube. And uh, this way, I have a nice and secure uh, hold for my uh, for my US tube. I'm gonna make a small bundle of uh, a small bundle of tying thread here, just to uh, to to do the rest of the fly. And now I'm gonna take a hackle, a fluoro uh, yellow fluoro chartreuse uh, uh, hen cape here. No, no, yeah, yeah, hen hen hackle. I'm gonna use one of the smaller one if I can find one. There's one that appeared to be a bit smaller because I do, I, I do not want this fly to be uh, to be large. I want it to be a, a fairly small one. That's also why I've used this. It's it's only a point zero centimeter the the US tube here, so it's it's a fairly small US tube also. I want to use this in uh, in uh, in low water conditions. So attach this here. As you can see, I've stripped one of the sides because I don't do not want this hackle to be too dominant. But <laughs> I still want it to be on there, so probably need to fasten it a bit, uh, a bit better on this next go. Like that. There, I'm going to turn it. I should have cut this off before I started, but oh, well, never mind. Got around to it now, like that. For some reason, my hackle has turned the wrong way here. I don't know how that happened. I tied it down the way I should, but I'm gonna redo this because uh, that doesn't uh, does not look good. Um, what's important when you make these hackles is is that you you tie them down the correct way. Otherwise, your hackles will simply uh, simply uh, well uh, d uh, be facing the wrong way. The the the, the natural flow of, of the feathers will be uh, will be the wrong way. I'm looking for a smaller hackle here, one that will suit my purpose, one that will suit my, my fairly small fly. <laughs> where, are you, where are you hiding? Here was one. So as I was saying, this is the side, the, the upside, the side that is uh, the most uh, 
most vibrant in color. Um, uh, and then the feather fell apart in my hands. This is not going. <laughs> this was not what I was going for. But you know, uh, that's just how fly tying is. Um, sometimes you have a bit of a bit of problems. Let me just see here if I can find the perfect feather. I have almost emptied my bag. Cheat my bag. Yeah, that was one that was good. So I'm gonna strip off all this annoying wool down here, all the fluff, and then I'm gonna take the upper side here and I'm gonna remove as much of that as I can, like so. There, see, now I have a small feather. I'm gonna turn all of this back here, like that, and I'm gonna tie this down. So when I turn my hackle in a second, uh, it should, I know that wasn't the case, but what should happen was that the feather should, uh, the, the hackle should simply, should simply be guided in the right direction. Of course, I'm going to help it as much as I can here. Like that. This looks better. Like so. Like that. Have a small Schutzhuis hackle. So now I'm going to take some uh, some fox. This is a uh, marble fox, but you can easily use. Uh, Arctic fox or, or whatever you have in, in grey. I'm going to cut out a piece of this. And when you're making flies like this, it's important that you uh, you start by pulling out some of this uh, this wool that is down here because uh, there's simply going to be too much of it. And also, if, if you just tied this down, my wing would not be uh, my wing would be well too thin. So I'm, so I'm taking all most of uh, of these uh, longer fibers here, longer, uh, but I'm gonna add them to the wing again, uh, simply so uh, so I won't uh, I won't uh, be missing them. I'm just just gonna mix it up again, so so they will be there. Uh, they will simply not be completely as long as they were before, because uh, because they give a nice uh, they give a nice uh, movement to to a wing. And makes a wing uh, better if if they're there than if they're not, like this. Uh, tie down and because this thread is so strong, I can really really tie this down how I want it to be. You can see the wing stands nice up, nicely nicely up, and I have uh, all the different uh, all the different lengths there, so that is good. Gonna cut all the leftover off, and because I really could use uh, that much force, this wing is is never moving anywhere. This wing is, stays exactly where I placed it, uh, even though I'm gonna cut pretty, f pretty much uh, of uh, of the material up to it, like so. And what I want to do now is, is I want to have a want to have a partridge hackle here in front of uh, uh, in the front of this fly. Partridge is uh, is. Uh, is is nice feathers um, with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of beautiful markings. So so it's a, it's a shame it isn't used as often in salmon and sea trout flies as uh, as I think they ought to be because they truly are wonderful and beautiful feathers. Let's see if I can find me the right one here. I think it's I'm probably gonna need two. For this, uh, because what uh, what I have my partridge here is uh, is very good for nymphs, but not that good for for bigger flies. So I'm I'm, I'm simply just gonna gonna use two two feathers tied in uh, over one another. Oh, I want to use some flesh first. Uh, I want to have a bit of wing and flesh in silver. Uh, yeah, silver is uh, the right color for for this pattern. 
just gonna take some of this. Winged flesh is actually the original uh, flesh, the original uh, angel hair. So, so uh, uh, this was the first product like this, and then the angel hair just is kind of a knockoff branch, knockoff product. As you may notice, some of these are fairly long, but I'm just gonna trim these. Uh, used about 10 or something like that strands. All these that is in front I'm going to cut off at the base like so. This is simply just a little flash to, to give it a little bit of a little bit of, of cyst you might say. So I think it's called zest. I don't know. Uh, it would correct me if, if that's not a word you can use. In this case, you could also say a bit of, bit of, uh, a bit of drama, a bit of action. I'm gonna turn my partridge feather here. Like so. And as I expected, uh, this one feather was not enough. I need to take another one. I have one prepared already here. Oh, that wasn't wasn't any good. I'm gonna take a new one. This one looks better. After this, we just need to add some jungle cock and uh, and a cone head, and then actually the fly is done. Like that. Gonna turn the heck on here, like so. the stem at the tip. I'm gonna fold everything back together here. Like that looks fairly good. So some jungle cook. I'm gonna use some real jungle cook for this fly. What we need here is a fairly small one because this fly is a fairly small fly. And the trick with the jungle cock is often to simply just uh, leave a bit of uh, a bit of the uh, the feather here to uh, to to get it to stay where you want it to be like that. Does that look good? Yeah, that looks great. Um, add a bit of super glue and uh, a cone head and then a cone head and silver and then you are you are ready to rock and roll. I'm just gonna finish this fly here. On the other side, of course, I want uh, some jungle cook on the other side as well. all the stuff that is not necessary making a whip finish there and uh, applying a bit of super glue you could apply that to the thread, but it's fairly easy to uh, to use this uh, saber gap here. I'm just gonna use a small amount here, like that. 
well I had a small cone head here oh there it is a small cone head here to uh, to finish off the fly and and give it a bit more uh, shine small silver cone head and there you have it a small uh, Fruit, 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 yellow. A small, a small tube fly. Easy to make, but very, very, very cool in the in the water. I'm just gonna show you the fly a bit closer, like that. A cool little fly. I'm really, really looking forward to this. I know this is gonna get me some salmon and probably some uh, some decent sea trout as well so well uh, those were the words thank you for uh, tuning in